Huge news breaking over the weekend that scientists have genetically modified human embryos for the first time. Many of our viewers have emailed me when we talk about organizations that are trying to get permission to modify human embryos genetically. I get emails saying, David, this is inevitable. This is going to happen sooner or later, either on the record or off the record. And Chinese scientists have now edited the genome of a human embryo. Their work was published late last week in a not very well known journal called Protein and Cell. Uh, and this is really, really big news in two ways. Number one, it's big news because this is the first time that this has been done. It is also big news because it has it has confirmed for us that it is not going to be some immediate overwhelming success to try to modify human embryos to prevent certain diseases. This particular experiment done by the Chinese team was meant to find and edit the gene responsible for thalassemia, which is an inherited blood disorder, which can lead to severe anemia. And they uh, did not have a huge success rate in doing this. The researchers started with 86 embryos that were unlikely to ever develop successfully in the first place. 71 of those embryos made it to the end of the study. Of those, 54 were tested and the team discovered that only 28 of those had been successfully modified. And even further, some of those 28 had experienced mutations that were not intended to happen and also would not have been able to uh, 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 successfully develop because of the new problems that were caused by the modification that was done. So a lot of controversy over this. There is uh, a group of stem cell researchers in the UK, which has also applied for permission to genetically modify human embryos. And the way I feel about this is we are dealing with embryos here that are unlikely, almost almost guaranteed never to successfully develop into a, uh, a viable uh, fetus, a viable human. And with that, I have absolutely no problem in doing research. And at the same time, I recognize that this is research that is going to take a long time to develop successfully. As we see from these early trials, there's no easy path here to saying, oh, yeah, we're, we're going to start doing this. And in five years, we'll be able to easily and precisely and reliably fix predisposition to certain diseases. This is going to be a very long path. And the last thing I want as someone who is pro science and against allowing religious dogma to interfere with science, the last thing that I want is religion and religious conservatism getting in the way of what is already going to be a difficult path towards medical advancement. So I think that this is huge news and I am of the of the uh, position that we should be creating the legal structure so that this type of work can be done in the open, documented in the open so that science can build on itself the way that the scientific method works. If you disagree about doing this for non religious reasons, if you disagree for religious reasons, I sort of already understand that if you disagree with doing this type of research on non viable human embryos for non religious reasons, please write to us. Go to David and click on contact us and let me know what your opposition is based on. And we'll do a follow up and we'll call it non religious opposition to uh, uh, em embryo uh, genetic modification research, whatever. And we'll discuss those reasons. I'm very interested to hear from you.